Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Position, not place. Makana, not makan. The so-called hadith of the maidservant has been the subject of extensive scholarly discussion. Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam said, I had a maidservant who tended goats by the side of Uhud and Jawaniyyah. One day I happened to pass that way and found that a wolf had taken a goat from her flock. I am, after all, but a child of Adam, and I feel regret just as they do. So I gave her a slap. Then I came to God's Messenger والسلام, and felt that I had done something grievous. I said, O Messenger of God, should I grant her freedom? The Holy Prophet وسلم, said, Bring her to me. So I brought her to him. He said to her, Where is God? She said, He is in heaven. Fisama. He said, Who am I? She said, You are the messenger of God. He said, Grant her freedom. She is a believing woman. Sahih Muslim. One group has used this hadith to even justify the belief that God is spatially located in heaven, in As-Sama. Conflicts over this hadith have resulted in the spilling of much ink. What is even stranger is that in our age, when the vastness of space is on full display for the eyes of both the believer and the unbeliever to behold, there are still scholars who talk about the heaven in the same manner as those of the days of old. God says, Truly those who deny our signs and wax arrogant against them, the gates of heaven shall not be opened for them, nor shall they enter the garden till the camel pass through the eye of the needle. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 40. A hadith describes the gates of heaven as closing in front of the spirit of the unbeliever. Where then is heaven? You should know, may God grant you success, that heaven and earth occupy a single locus or a single mahal, according to the people of unveiling and certainty. Because for them, everything other than God or the realm of Masiwallah is sheer imagination. Now, even though this imagined realm appears to occupy space, it has no actual existence. A single place can contain not only a world, but multiple worlds within the same spatial boundaries and without them interpenetrating. Behold, may God have mercy on you, the meticulous perfection of the Lord. Behold how in Sunat Allah, the work of God who perfects all things, multiple worlds and creatures exist, yet neither overtakes the other. Roaming angels, flying jinn, and walking humans, each in their own world. Now, in order to pass from earth to heaven, you do not need to fly upward nor descend downward. Instead, what you need is a luminous spiritual capacity that can pierce through the veils. You need quwa, ruhaniya, nuraniya. It is in the measure of your luminosity and capacity that you climb and ascend. An important remark concerning the realms of the unseen and the visible is in order. The earth that you walk upon, dear disciple, is the visible realm. The first heaven in your case, the Sama'ul Ula, is the unseen realm. It and all its inhabitants, angels and otherwise, are unseen, they are ghayb for you. But when you pierce through the veil of heedlessness that is cast over the eye of your heart, the celestial steed of invocation, the Buraq al-Dhikr, leads you to ascend to the first heaven, and you'll find yourself standing on an earth that is different from ours, yet nonetheless an earth with regard to your essence. At that moment, what was once unseen for you will become visible, 
and what was once heaven will become your earth. The same applies from the first to the seventh heaven. The unseen is a relative category. This effect, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, a solar eclipse occurred during the lifetime of God's Messenger So he performed the eclipse prayer. His companions asked, O Messenger of God, we saw you reaching out for something while standing in prayer, and then we saw you withdrawing. The Prophet said, I was shown paradise and reached towards a cluster of fruit from it. Had I taken it, you would have eaten from it as long as the world remained. Sahih Bukhari Now, when the Holy Prophet ﷺ extended his noble hand to pick from the fruits of paradise, was he in the garden or on earth? The congregants behind God's Messenger ﷺ were seeing him in the prayer niche of his noble mosque in the radiant city of Medina. Yet at the same instant, he was in the celestial gardens because he pierced through the veils of the visible world and, by virtue of his intense luminosity, he became unseen with respect to the veiled persons behind him. God describes this by saying, Thou seest them looking upon thee, but they see not. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 198. It is for this reason that after he وسلم, passed on to Ar-Rafiq Al-A'la, the Sublime Companion, he became ontologically situated in a place that is unseen. As he said, what lies between my grave and my pulpit is one of the meadows of the garden. Musnad Ahmad Behold how place became position and how the unseen became visible by the grace of our Master, the Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are many hadiths on this subject that make this meaning evident. For instance, it is reported that Ali ibn Abi Talib, may God ennoble his countenance, said, I heard God's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, Whoever visits his Muslim brother when he is sick, he walks among the meadows of the garden till he sits down, and when he sits down, he is covered with mercy. If it is morning, 70,000 angels will send blessings upon him till the evening, and if it is evening, 70,000 angels will send blessings upon him till the morning. Sunan ibn Majah. Thus, the Muslim who visits his sick Muslim brother is walking in the meadows of the garden by the grace of the divine saying or the hadith Qudsi, I was sick, but you did not visit me. Now these realities that we're discussing are only understood by the people of direct witnessing and unveiling, the people of Mushahada and Kashf. As for veiled persons, the highest they can attain is to surrender to what has been said without figurative interpretation or understanding. If you do understand what we have just explained to you concerning position and place, then by analogy you may draw meaning from the verses of the Noble Qur'an that speak of aboveness, or al-fawq, and of heaven, as-sama'. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد